Hey, welcome to Ask Firebase. I'm Thomas Bolden. How's it going, Firebase developers? Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, your host, and today my co-host is Thomas Bolden. Tell our viewers about what you do here. So I joined Firebase a couple years ago, and there's this upcoming product called Cloud Functions, and we wanted to get the real-time database in it. It's been a real game changer for me, I know, and I think that's definitely been the case for a lot of our developers. So <laughs> let's see what we got. Let's answer some questions about it, shall we? Sure. Cloud functions for this person are taking longer than expected. How performant are cloud functions for Firebase when we do heavy jobs with them? Cloud functions is still in beta, and one of the things we're focusing on are both quality, like reliability and performance. But still, one of the things that's very paradoxical about cloud functions is they actually do better under heavy jobs than they do when you're just starting up. Mm -hmm. Because cloud functions are designed, like the way we can give it to you for free for small usage is we, we shut them down when they're not being used and they will automatically scale up up to whatever quota limits you set when right. they're under heavy traffic. So when you're developing the cloud function, it might actually be in one of the worst case scenarios because each time you hit what we call a cold start. But what happens is as the machinery kind of keeps on you know, warming up, you have these machines that are readily available and you have many, many more machines you would, than you would have had had you built your own infrastructure. Um, so uh, go ahead and do some load tests. I think you'll be very pleased with the results. Um, but cloud functions are actually designed for heavy jobs first. Yeah, and you know, having been there right from the beginning, and probably a lot of our developers have as well since they first came out um, in beta, uh, that cold start has improved tremendously. Oh, yeah. oh, I yeah. mean, wh what a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, here's hoping we continue to see improvements, but that totally makes sense that, you know, that's, that's something that we can expect to happen. Yeah. I mean, and, and hold us accountable. Like our goal is to make sure that we work together uh, as platform developers and with you know you as our customers to make sure that we can come up with something that really solves your needs. You just have to answer things that you do all day. I have the challenging part, which is reading people's names and tags and just feeling terrible about <laughs> screwing it up. So here we go. Want to read this one for me? Sure. Jimmy Robs asks, "Hello at that gen person." That's me. Should I keep my Firebase service account secret from my version control system? Thank you, hashtag ask Firebase. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. The short answer is yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I've noticed a lot of questions about things that people want to hide that they don't necessarily have to, like, like a public API key. But this is definitely something where it's a good idea to keep it out of your version control system. And luckily, you can use the environmental variables and uh, functions.config to uh, hide that information. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a great question on Stack Overflow that like showcased exactly how to do this for anyone who's not familiar, and I'll, I'll link to that as well. Our next question comes from D. Chad Portwine, who wants to know how should I use Firebase environment configuration to store secret API keys that Cloud Functions for Firebase will use for JOT authentication. Okay, so I think there's one of two parts to this question: uh, either how do I get it into runtime config, or how do I use it once it's there? For getting into runtime config, frankly. Uh, there's not really a helper for getting that file that you downloaded in the, the control panel uh, into your runtime config. So currently, you can do copy and paste. If you just search on Google, you can get a Medium post that actually has a script for doing this as well. But this is something that we might consider adding direct support for in the future. Once you have it in there, though, uh, if you, for example, load this as a secret is your top level key, and then all the other things, uh, the fields are sub values in there, then you can just say, Firebase uh, initialize app, and then in your options, you say credential is firebase.credential.cert, and then you pass the value that's in your runtime config. So uh, firebase. Or sorry, functions.config.secret. Nice, yeah. And so we'll, we'll also link to an example yeah. with that. It's a bit of a mouthful, but like each piece kind of composes yes. pretty well. Yes, so. once you see it, you'll, it's, it's much simpler. Yeah. And then I just thought broadly we could sort of talk about recently. Uh, Cloud Functions for Firebase version uh, 1.0 came out, and so looking at versions 1.0 and beyond, what are some like differences or improvements that people might want to know about? Yeah, yeah. So the the one thing that everybody immediately talks about is the fact that we, after a lot of thought, changed the function signatures. This was not an easy choice to make, uh, but we think it was the right one because it dramatically simplified how 99% of people use functions. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that, frankly, if you already have, for example, some function that you had running elsewhere that used a data snapshot from the Firebase real-time database, 
you can just pass that function to the Google Cloud Functions SDK and it will automatically work. Everything that used to use the data types can be used as a cloud function. And we think that that was a really, really good change in how we design these things. Now, as part of that philosophy, we also decided that we were going to get rid of new types per cloud function data source. So this is why we got rid of the data delta snapshot for the real-time database. Right. Uh, because it was really clever and people liked it, but we felt that if we had to be clever every time we added a new event source, eventually we were gonna screw up. N none of you were gonna remember all these small nuances. So we decided to go back to basics and really simplify our approach. We have one new data type for change that anybody can use when they want to have a before and after version of data. Right. But we now have a style guide that when we add new event sources, we require those teams to use the same data types that you use everywhere else. And I think that, that consistency is really going to pay off. It makes testing easier, uh, a bunch of things like that. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right that, that this was not taken lightly and there was a lot of conversation that went into it. Mm -hmm. So even though there are some tweaks that you know developers are going to have to make to their functions initially, I absolutely agree as Firebase continues to grow and we end up with a whole bunch of different triggers, it would be nice to not have to remember uh, different nuances about how each yeah. of them works. Yeah, and frankly, uh, you know, we, we worked together to update the uh, function samples repo and it was very, very easy. It was very low risk. It, uh, yeah, I can attest to that uh, because that change happened uh, four days before I was giving a talk that included <laughs> cloud functions. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, can't you think about my schedule though? Um, but yeah, so I was like on the plane to DC and it took me maybe 15 minutes to fix it, if that. And that's like being careful. Because um, yeah. it really is, it's only a couple of changes to any existing functions. Yeah, so. yeah we didn't really overhaul anything. Um, some of the other changes are a deeper focus on testability. Um, so we actually, almost last minute, scrapped some of our testing ideas and we realized that uh, we had a complicated framework and we were building another complicated testing framework on top of it. And we said, okay, well, what if we instead tried to more directly expose the thing you're trying to test? That way, maybe you don't even need our testing utilities in order to do good unit tests. And that's why we have the new dot run method. And so now you don't need to know about the possibly undocumented way that we connect with cloud functions and you know create these JSON files. You have just the dot run method. You can pass only the data parameter if you, that's all you need. You don't need to create or understand the event context unless you use it. And we really feel that this kind of helps make this much easier to do unit tests for. And then Lauren Long, uh, who's been on here a number of times, did a lot of work on creating a fakes module so you can actually create dynamic fake events for your cloud functions if you want to do some unit testing as well that way. Very cool. Thanks so much for coming on and answering some questions about one of my favorite products, uh, Cloud Functions for Firebase. Remember, if you have any questions about Cloud Functions or any other Firebase features, be sure to uh, list them on social media with the hashtag AskFirebase and you may see them on a future episode. And be sure to subscribe to the Firebase channel so you can check out new episodes of Ask Firebase as well as Meet Firebase and Firecasps and all of the special features that we have going on there. Thanks so much for being on the show. Of course, thank you. And for having me. Uh, thank all of you for watching. Um, see you on a future episode. Well, 